Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina and I uh, wanted to share a little bit of information. Uh, I keep hearing this, I keep seeing it and it's uh, a little bit frustrating the misinformation that surrounds this. So I wanted to do a quick video this morning, talk a little bit about social media posts. So often I see people say, it's because of all those photos you're posted, that's why the fishery is closed. That's false. Totally misinformation, it's a myth, it's a rumor, it's untrue. Now, we wanna talk a little bit in this video today about how fisheries, or how fishery science informs managers. And let me tell you, it's not social media. No one is looking at your social media and saying, well, this guy caught a lot of fish, we gotta shut her down. That doesn't happen, no one does that. But social media can be used in fisheries enforcement, you post a photo of a fish you caught out of season, someone's gonna come find out about that one. So they do use it for enforcement and it can inform social science. So social science can influence managers, especially at the state level. The new state management FWC rolled out one of the main tenets, the like six things they're looking for is stakeholder engagement. So if a bunch of people are showing a bunch of photos of a bunch of fish they killed and it makes someone feel a certain way, then that feeling can inform social science and can put pressure on the commission. However, at the federal level, what you post on social media really has no bearing whatsoever on fishery science or management, but it could hurt you in law enforcement. So law enforcement, yeah, there is some social media ramifications there. Don't, don't post photos of felonies. That's a good idea. I mean, just general rule of thumb, if you're breaking the law, it's probably not a good idea to post about it, right? But hey, it is 2023, people do stupid stuff. <laughs> so first things first, fishery science. One of the main things people get really excited about and are frustrated with is the, the data issues, right? I think everybody can agree we have some problems getting some data, especially in the recreational fishery. Now, a lot of people get confused about this. Guess what? If you're on a charter boat or a party boat, you're still a recreational fisherman. It doesn't matter if you're a charter boat or party boat or on a private boat. We're all recreational fishermen. So I just want to lay that out for the start of the video. Now, I think we can all agree there's some problems getting that recreational fishing information, right? And that's what a lot of people are talking about with this gag grouper closures. How do they know? And it's a big problem. We tried to address it. We tried to roll out some data collection improvements, but it was really mismanaged, really rolled out poorly, uh, in my opinion, and it was really mishandled by uh, a lot of different things. A lot of different things happened, and long story short, uh, our new data collection program failed uh, because it was rolled out in a really kind of junky way and I had a lot of things that people didn't like and we were slowly working to address those things but it wasn't happening very quickly and unfortunately we couldn't work together to improve the data collection program so it failed. We're going to try again and it's going to be better and it's going to win this time, right? Uh, there's a lot of effort to improve data collection. What a lot of people say is, why can't we use our phones, man? I've got this phone app. We could just use our phones. I could tell them what I'm reporting every day right seems pretty logical seems pretty easy seems like it's 2023 why not use our phone apps and just report well on the federal side of things one of the main issues is data validation that's the big hang-up because one of the good things and bad things the double-edged sword that gets us is the need for third-party peer review in our stock assessment process so at the federal level, when they do a stock assessment, it goes through what's called the CDAR process, Southeast Assessment Data and Review Workshop. So that's the CDAR process. And essentially when a fishery gets assessed, let's say they're gonna do an assessment on gag grouper, they do an assessment and they have what's first called a data workshop. So a bunch of scientists, academics, fishermen, they all get into a room and they start proposing data sets like, I've been doing this research project about male gags and I've been finding this and we've been looking at this and this is a research project. This is how I set it up. This is how I did it. This is the data uh, collection procedures I used and they do a presentation and then there's a big discussion of, yeah, this seems pretty legit. Let's throw it in the assessment. And then if it does get assessed or does get input in the data collection and uh, 
data assessment model, once it goes through the stock assessment, the stock assessments uh, results are then third party peer reviewed. So if you use a data input in the assessment model that isn't quantitative enough, isn't subjective, it's something that's an opinion or something like, let's say, well, I saw a lot of social posts about this guy. He killed a lot of gag grouper. We should close it. It doesn't work that way. It's impossible because it's not third party peer reviewable. It's not validated. And on top of that, it's not legally defensible. So for people to say they used your social media post and you're causing the death of our fishery because of what you posted on social media is absolutely asinine. It's asinine. However, Again, they do use it for law enforcement, and yes, it can be a cultural thing, right? You're encouraging a killing a bunch of fish for no reason, wanton waste. So there are some aspects to not posting crazy stuff like that, but is it used for fishery science? No, it's a myth. And 100% at the federal level, at the state level, no one uses your social media posts for fishery science information. Think about it. Not everybody posts on social media, right? So how would that be a representative data set? And do you post on social media every fishing trip you do? No, you don't. It's not a representative data set. A lot of times you're gonna post on social media when you get that really big trophy fish, or you're gonna post on social media when you get a really nice catch. Are you gonna post on social media, hey, I went out today and got skunked, here's a photo of the sunset. Some people do, <laughs> but not everybody. And you don't do it every time, right? So a lot of times, not everybody's on social media. A lot of times the, the, the data bias is that you're only reporting the really good catches. So how could they use that as a representative data set? They can't. It's not legally defensible. It's not 30, third party peer reviewable. And that's why it can't be plugged into a, an assessment model and it can't be used to inform managers and it can't be used to shut down a fishery. So the idea that what you post on social media is the cause for a fishery shutdown is not true. It's asinine, it's impossible, it's moronic. So don't propagate the rumor. Let's all work together to stop the rumor. What's really used is data and data can be improved. We can all work together to improve data. And I think that's the big goal right now. And that's the big thing that everybody's working towards. One of the big things that gets thrown around is, well, they just announced it was 30 to 40% overestimated. Yes, there is a huge problem with MRIP, the Marine Recreational Information Program that was just identified. Is it infuriating? Yes. Is it frustrating? Yes. Does it suck? Yes. However, it was identified because they're trying to improve the data collection system. What they found was in the, if you reverse the order of the questions, it can change the respondents' uh, answers and the resulting recreational effort estimations for shore-based and private boat anglers by anywhere. Nothing like a live video. So it can change it by 32 to about 39% in our area. Uh, I think it was 32 to 37%. I don't know. I, we had a presentation about it yesterday. Uh, so it's fresh in the mind. But long story short, it was simply just changing the order of the first two questions. The first question was, how many times have you fished in the last two months? The second question was, how many times have you fished in the last 12 months? And the idea, the statistically validated idea that's normally used is you ask an easier question first, followed by a more difficult question. And neurological studies have said, if you ask an easier question first, it kind of gives you a little bit of confidence. You can answer a harder question second. So very, very valid way of doing surveys. They ask an easy question first and a harder question second. Well, what this program did, this pilot project, this this uh, basically this test was, all right, what happens if we reverse the questions? We ask, how many times have you been fishing in the last 12 months? How many times have you been fishing in the last two months? What happened? The respondents had 
about 40% less recreational effort. So it was overestimating effort by quite a lot because what do people want? When they fill out this survey, the idea is people want to be included as anglers. So you get this survey and you wanna say, yeah, yeah, I was fishing in the last two months when you ask that question first. But if you switch those questions around and you say, have you been fishing in the last 12 months? People could be like, yeah, I went fishing a bunch. I'm, I'm a fisherman. And then the second question, have you been fishing in the last two months? Well, no, I kind of got busy. So it actually showed lower effort. So that is why they have this big thing that they came out with that, hey, MRIP, the Marine Recreational Information Program, the Fishing Effort Survey, so MRIP, FES, has been overestimating recreational uh, effort on shore-based and private boats because of this data, what's called telescoping bias. So yes, it's a problem. Yes, it's uh, infuriating. Yes, it sucks, but it's a product of them trying to improve the system. So it is kind of a double-edged sword there. And then also it is going to improve the system because now instead of every two months, they're gonna be doing it every month. And then now they're gonna be doing a larger sample size study. They're gonna be trying some other things to try to improve the survey even more. So yes, it's annoying. Yes, it sucks, but it's gonna improve the overall system. And the only reason they found it is because they were trying to improve the system and they were forthright about it. People are using it as a political headline and twisting it to, no, it was 40% off. Can you believe this? Yes, it sucks. Yes, I'm frustrated about it too, but don't believe all the hype and don't read the headlines. Look into it. They're trying to improve the system. NOAA has an Office of Science and Technology, NOAA OST, and that's the whole group that's running this pilot project that's trying to improve our recreational data collection. I'd say, and I would encourage, them to keep trying. Let's find some more problems and fix those too. Seems like a good thing, right? But unfortunately, the politics of it get twisted. And that's what's happening now. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I gotta get back to work. <laughs> I said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I gotta get back to work, but definitely no one uses your social media posts to close fisheries and yes, NOAA's uh, MRIP uh, FES was overestimating private recreational data. It's a crap situation we're in, but we're working, or they are working to improve the data collection system. And I think we should encourage that. And I think we should continue to encourage more recreational data improvement. And I think there's ways to do it. We just all got to work together and find those ways to validate the data because we can't just all start reporting tomorrow on a cell phone app. There has to be some sort of validation component. And validation component can come from boots on the ground, more law enforcement officers, which I think everyone needs more of, right? Because tomorrow, if we got $10 billion and they had the best fishery science ever, it would be useless because the best fishery science ever and the most robust science ever would be awesome. It would inform management really well. They could have some really good management from well-informed science, but well-informed science gives you really good management. It's all useless without really good enforcement. You know how many NOAA office of, or you know how many NOAA agents are in the Southeast? The Southeast region, region is from North Carolina to Brownsville, Texas and the Caribbean. Guess how many NOAA uh, agents there are for that entire Southeast region from North Carolina to Texas and the Caribbean? Guess, try to guess, like 35. I think last time I saw a presentation, there was 35. 35 people from North Carolina to Texas and the Caribbean. It's pathetic. Now, what they did was they did this JEA program or Joint Enforcement Agreement with the states and they gave the states some money to help them enforce federal law and uh, federal waters. So a state FWC officer, instead of just enforcing uh, water or fishing stuff in state waters out to nine miles, they could go into federal waters and enforce federal regulations if they took the special course and were a part of the JEA program. It was really cool. And they had $1.2 million of funding. They just cut that funding to $300,000. So they cut the funding by 75% to our state's JEA enforcement programs. And there's still only 35 people enforcing the laws 
from North Carolina to Texas and the Caribbean. It's pathetic. We need to fix that. We need more science. We need more enforcement. We need more recreational data improvement. We all got to work together. You guys have a great day. Tight lines. Don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Hopefully, you'll join us every Sunday night at 7.30 p.m. for our live stream show where we answer your questions live and have a great time hanging out. So if you want more videos like this, make sure you check out the Captain Dylan Hubbard page. I'm going to try to do some of these videos a little bit more often, just strictly about fishery science and management, just giving you facts, and hopefully you enjoy them. Don't shoot the messenger. Have a great day.